and welcome to Hidden Treasures, the programme that sets out to find and enjoy railways, unlike this one, that are hidden away from the public gaze. Our first offering is the railway of Richard Everett. After modelling in 16 mil, Richard decided to take a step up and constructed a 5-inch gauge railway system in his suburban back garden. There's a branch line to a terminus station, circular running track, sidings, water tank and all the other paraphernalia one associates with a well-run railway. Richard also constructed all the rolling stock, including this battery-driven loco, which has proved to be something of a winner to both adults and children. The railway is a testament not only to Richard's engineering skills, but also to his planning abilities that has enabled this quite complex line to sit happily in his garden. Impressive though that all this is, it's not quite as impressive as the flagship engine of the line. Because, probably unique in this scale, Richard has gone and built one of the most sophisticated steam engines of its era, the Double Fairly. I was interested in modelling the Fairly because it has a distinctive sound and it's also ideal for my garden, being rather small diameter. I can get a very large engine around it, as uh, you realise. Um, I wouldn't get a five foot uh, long or six foot long framed, uh, solid framed engine around my garden. It would be too big. It wouldn't bend around the corners. But fairly, being of that pattern, does. In the 1830s, the Festiniog Railway had small locomotives, 040s. They were not powerful enough for what they wanted to use on the railway. So Robert Fairley came up with a design where you had two steam bogies allowing it to go around very sharp curves but you got double the power. Only the same manpower to actually do it. Very wise thinking in those days. Yeah, it has two fire boxes, uh, one boiler and what is called in the middle a wet feather where the two fire boxes back onto each other, leaving a water jacket between them. It's like two fire boxes, two, two sets of tubes going left and right, and then you're, the engine is the two bogies actually cause the draft, which is a fairly patent, up the chimney. So it's just the, the, the uh, basis of, of a normal boiler virtually joined together, if you understand, to, to obtain the two locomotive powered uh, one loco, you see. The steam is piped from the boiler itself, from the dome, along pipes underneath and up through a pivot in the middle, because as you realise the Fairley is an articulated locomotive, so therefore it goes through there and then along the bottom to the steam chest underneath the front of each bogey into the cylinders. After I decided to build a fairly, I then drew it out on brown paper which was eight foot long and I held it up in front of my wife at Christmas and said I'm going to build this. She said, you ain't, that's too big. But there we are, and a lot of other people said the same, but it was built. Being a sort of Victorian in my way of life, uh, in my profession, I'm involved with a lot of Victoriana type of furniture. I keep it simple. So some of the problems I solve myself. Let's be honest, the actual uh, drawing that I had was a, a two inch scale um, drawing, you know, it's really not um, much, it just gave me measurements and they were enough to actually get the scale. The actual cylinder size, the motion work is a matter of working out yourself. If you've been involved in steam, which I have for a very long while, then it comes second nature. You know what valve gear, you know the lengths that you need, you know exactly where it all needs to be to achieve what you need to do. So therefore you do little drawings, little sketches, and so you get, build it and uh, that's it. You don't do it any other way. It's like everybody else, but, but then of course later on people do drawings and people follow them. 
but I'm afraid I'm I'm a leader and not a follower. If I, I like to build individual things and um, that's really how it all came about. I built everything except the steam gauges and the injectors. They're the only two things that I bought. I mean, uh, as a finished item. I bought the material, obviously. Sheet steel, and I made the patterns for all the castings, which the late Norman Spinks did for me, and a great job they were. Really lovely cast iron to work with. And I've still got the patterns. He sent them back. He said he didn't think anybody else was mad enough to build another one. <laughs> so there we are. One thing I hadn't considered when I started building it was how I was going to actually drive it. But I thought I would be sitting in the middle driving with the regulators between my legs but I hadn't considered that either side of me were two steam safety valves which were very close and I didn't fancy either side either back or front being scalded so the brain had to come in gear once again and work out how I was going to do it and the only way I could think was with long rods and um, I sort of pondered how, how this was going to work out. It took quite some time to get them to work nicely. Um, there's one problem because it's on a curve all the while. <laughs> the actual stick wants to go out that you're controlling it by, but you can sort of get over that. First time I drove it, uh, I really was quite uh, awe-inspired by how much power I'd got because, you know, it's... Uh, two inch bore, three inch stroke, four cylinders, which is nearly as about as much power as a traction engine, full size, I don't know, three quarter horse. And so, you know, I, well, when I opened the regulator gently, uh, it was off. Everything was nice and tight and new, and um, it, it ran very well. It took me four years to build and a very unhappy wife. <laughs> well, I was working away in here, machining it, and uh, I used to have the radio on quietly in the background, and all of a sudden the voice came home over the radio, Richard, Judy says, would you pack up and come in, please? And I couldn't believe me, yes, <laughs> she'd phoned up Chilton Radio. So there you are. Richard Everett's amazing double fairly, a masterpiece in model engineering, and we're very grateful that he took the trouble to show it to us. And if you know of any hidden treasures that you'd like to share with us, please get in touch. The address, giles at therailwaychannel.com. I'd love to hear from you.